So I'll tell you just for a brief moment how I spend some of my days to give you perhaps uh, more of an idea of what it is exactly that I do. Because when I tell people that I'm a specialist in the field of early childhood psychology, that can and does mean so many different things for me. So my day could look like um, speaking at a conference to public school teachers, public elementary school teachers. Or um, frequently I spend the time, I spend a lot of my time in the back of classrooms watching teachers teach. And I watch what teachers do when there is some type of inappropriate behavior, some type of distraction in their classroom. And much of the research that I conducted for over eight years was comprised of my watching exactly what occurs between a parent and a child or a teacher and a child when something, again, is distracting, when there's some type of inappropriate behavior. And I spent over eight years looking at, looking for, perhaps, all of the mistakes that parents and teachers make when they redirect displays of inappropriate behavior and how successful different tactics, methods, and techniques are. So there's that aspect. I sit in the back of classrooms, I watch teachers teach, I tell them the things that I saw that I thought was great, and I tell them a lot of things that I saw that could be better. Also, I spend time in individual houses, in individuals' homes. Um, a lot of families engage me to spend time with them and their children within the parameters of their household so I can see what types of struggles that are occurring and um, to help them find great tactics for redirecting those. So let's look at the top of the page, if you will. Uh, speaking with Young Children Workshop. Underneath it says self-esteem, relationship, and understanding. So if I were to have a three-pronged um, approach to success for everyone, it would be self-esteem, that the child's self-esteem would be strengthened through the way that you communicate with them. And I think that our society and our culture in the last 15 to 20 years has sent a lot of mixed messages about what it means to strengthen a child's self-esteem. And a lot of what they say and a lot of what they advocate make me cringe, but we'll talk about that coming up in a bit. Um, relationship, the relationship that you have with the child, the relationship that the child has with you. Strengthening the relationship between you and the children that you regularly spend time with. And finally, understanding. You understanding the root cause of a lot of inappropriate behaviors that children regularly display and primarily that young children would have a greater understanding of what you're trying to communicate when you're redirecting them. Sometimes if a school or a district employs me to come in and watch some teachers, I might watch a kindergarten teacher and I might watch her um, speaking to a group of children when some type of inappropriate behavior has arisen or when something has gone wrong in her classroom. And afterward, I might ask this teacher, so tell me <clears throat> what you were trying to communicate to that group of girls. Tell me what you were trying to communicate to those two boys earlier. And the teacher might say, well, the thing I was trying to communicate was, and she'll tell me, and I'll say, well, you know, it's interesting because the thing that you communicated was the very opposite of that. So we're going to talk specifically about, and again, this might sound like it's such great detail, like, oh boy, are these things I'm going to be able to manage. But just relax and listen. We're going to talk specifically about words and not just semantics, but the specified meanings of words and how when you employ certain words, literally, certain words in your sentences, you are, in many cases, twice as likely to be successful in redirecting inappropriate behaviors because of the way children understand words. And it's interesting because I work with so many teachers and there are so many teachers that have quite a developed what I call early childhood vocabulary. And there are so many parents that have the same thing. So when a parent or a teacher talks to another adult, they speak, of course, in adult language. So many people, when they speak to children, they speak in the same adult language, they just do it in a different tone. And we're going to talk about being more successful in the tools that are in our belt, if you will, the um, early childhood vocabulary that we have. So moving down a bit. Uh, most important medium, speaking. Be careful instead of condescending. Uh, drop a child's eye level for extended conversation. Primarily, what I'd want you to know from that very top line, um, be careful instead of condescending. <coughs> be realistic. And this is something that I start most workshops and uh, conferences and seminars off with. And it's just a little example of sending children realistic messages. 
messages that children can use, that they can employ, that actually have an impact not only on them right here and right now, but actually have an impact on them in the future. And here it is, in terms of a young child's self-esteem. Perhaps you've all been in the scenario, or you've seen the scenario, where a young child feels good about something that they've accomplished, whether it's helping in the garden to stacking books the way that they needed to. A young child feels good about something that they've accomplished. So a young child will go to an adult, and they will communicate that to the adult. Hey, look at this neat thing. Hey, listen to this. Find out about the neat thing that I got a chance to do. So a child might say, um, hey, mom, I stacked, or dad, I stacked all of those rocks in the garden. And the adult might look out and see that they're stacked, and the adult might say to the child, gosh, Chris, you must be the strongest little boy in the world. And Chris is thinking, well, gosh, that feels good right now, but how realistic is it that I've actually achieved the feat of being the strongest little boy in the world at age four, and how did my mom find out about that? Or imagine that um, Christine just drew um, a neat picture. So Christine shows mom, dad, and adult, hey, look at this picture that I just spent some time drawing. Wow, Christine. And the adult might say, well, um, that looks like such a pretty blue sky. And that part reminds me of water down there. And then the adult might say, Christine, you must be the best artist in the world. And Christine's thinking, well, gosh, at five years old, what a thing to accomplish. My mom should really get out more often because I know there's <laughs> museums and there's collections around the world. How realistic is that message for me? Or um, Kelly has a new dress on and she shows her preschool teacher, her Sunday school teacher, hey, Mrs. Smith, look at my new dress. Kelly, that's a new dress? Wow. That is the most beautiful dress I've ever seen in my life, really. Well, I guess the one I'm going to wear tomorrow could never match up to this one <laughs> because this is already the most beautiful. And those type of messages, when a young child is sent a message like that, it flies out of the window, out into the universe, and it's gone forever in a matter of seconds. And you soon become a child, or you soon become a person categorically to that child who says things that don't have a lot of meaning. Instead, what I need as a child is I need things that are practical, I need things that are applicable, I need things that are pragmatic. Tell me the truth. So, prag pragmatic messages. So, let's go back to the garden and the rocks. Hey, mom, I stacked all of those, or dad, I stacked all of those rocks in the garden just the way you told me to. And a mom, dad, or adult looks out, wow, Chris, did it seem like it was a hard thing or kind of easy? Well, a little bit easy, but you must be getting stronger. Okay, that's true, that's usable. I can apply that to myself. Or, hey, mom, dad, adult, teacher, grandmother, grandfather, anyone in the world, look at this picture that I painted at school today. Wow, you painted that? Yeah, all by yourself or with someone else. Um, I did it all by myself. Wow, um, this part reminds me of a tree because it looks like a tree. And there's something up in the sky that um, you're not really sure about. So, and a lot of adults know the magic words rather than what's that. It's, well, tell me about that part. Well, that thing up in the sky was going to be an airplane, but um, painting airplanes are a tough thing to do, and so I turned it into a cloud instead. Good idea. I think painting airplanes are a pretty tough thing to do, too. Maybe next time I try to paint an airplane, if it looks different than the way that I want it to, maybe I'll turn mine into a cloud, too. Very neat, good idea. All of those things are things that I can use. Kelly, that's your new dress? Yes, do you like it? I do like it. Is it brand new or did you already have it? Well, it used to belong to my cousin, um, Courtney, but Courtney got too big and too tall and now it fits me just right. And you get to keep it? Yes, very pretty, thanks. Okay, those are things I can use. But when I hear you must be the best, you must be the strongest, that's the prettiest I've ever seen, you must be the strongest boy in the world, blah, blah, blah. All of that is a waste of time. And not only aren't you complimenting a young child, you're sending a young child very, very unrealistic messages that be careful because sometimes I say things that I absolutely don't mean. And we're going to speak in greater detail coming up in a bit about the utter, absolute, vital importance of you being an adult in any child's life that says what you mean. Because, and I'll give you just a little trailer teaser, if you will, um, young children will gain their sense of emotional safety and physical safety from being with adults that say what they mean, even if the adult sometimes says things that I don't like to hear. Again, young children will gain their sense of emotional safety. How emotionally safe am I with you? And physical safety. How